Over the past year, historians have been piecing together clues about its origins and discovered that this piece of cloth once part of a skirt that belonged to Queen Elizabeth I. For over 400 years, Queen Elizabeth I's body has been a total mystery. She forbade an autopsy, leaving history with only dark rumors. But now, scientists have finally analyzed her DNA from a secret sample. Historians believe this cloth is the only surviving piece of clothing belonging to Queen Elizabeth I. It's set to go on display at Hampton Court Palace once its restoration is complete. The results reveal what was really happening inside her body, and it's a shocking story of toxins, decay, and a bizarre final suffering that her court never understood. The findings explain everything, from her famous white mask to her strange final days. The Bacton Cloth Secret In a move that was kept almost entirely secret, a team of scientists and historians gained access to a priceless artifact. It wasn't her body. They didn't dare touch the tomb. The sample came from something even more personal, the Bacton Altar Cloth. For centuries, this was just a beautiful piece of embroidery hanging in a small church. But experts recently confirmed it is the only surviving piece of clothing worn by Elizabeth herself, a piece of a court dress from the late 16th century. For hundreds of years, it was used as an altar cloth at this rural church in Herefordshire. And more recently, it hung on its walls. And on it, preserved for four centuries, were microscopic traces of her bodily material. Using technology that would look like black magic to the Tudor court, scientists ran a full genetic and toxicological analysis. What they were looking for was simple, a cause of death. What they found was just weird. The crazy part is the DNA itself was the first shock. It confirmed her lineage, yes, but it also showed genetic markers for a high inflammatory response. But the real bombshell wasn't in the genes, it was in the toxins. The analysis revealed a toxicological profile that was, frankly, unbelievable. Her system was absolutely flooded with two of the most dangerous heavy metals known, lead and mercury. This wasn't a case of someone slipping poison in her wine. This was the result of decades of exposure. The levels were so high that by today's standards, she should have been suffering from severe organ failure and psychosis for years before her end. This DNA and toxin report wasn't just a medical file, it was a key. It unlocked the truth behind her most famous feature, her iconic white mask. It also explained the bizarre, terrifying behavior her courtiers witnessed in her final weeks. The queen wasn't just old or sad, she was being eaten from the inside out by her own image. The finding changes everything. It reframes her entire reign, painting a picture of a woman in constant hidden agony. Because she's a female monarch, she knows that she can use her appearance in court, not only through appearing in fantastic outfits, but in being painted in fantastic outfits that symbolize her leadership of the state. The weirdness of what was inside her body wasn't a single disease. It was a toxic storm, a slow motion breakdown that science has only just been able to piece together. Her body was a prison and the key was in her makeup. The price of purity. So here's the deal with Queen Elizabeth I. Everyone's obsessed with her image, the ghost white face, the blood red lips, the fiery wig. It's iconic. But what most people don't realize is that this look wasn't just fashion, it was a weapon. In a world run by men, Elizabeth, as an unmarried queen, had to project an image of something more than human. She couldn't be a normal, aging woman. She had to be Gloriana, the Virgin Queen, timeless and pure. And the main tool for this illusion was a cosmetic paste called Venetian Ceruse. And get this. Venetian ceruse was one of the most toxic substances you could possibly put on your body. Its main ingredient was white lead. The formula was simple. You mix powdered lead with vinegar and water. The result was a thick, brilliant white paint. She would layer this paste onto her face, her neck, and her hands, creating a mask that was rumored to be, in her later years, nearly an inch thick. This mask covered everything. In 1562, a vicious bout of smallpox almost ended her life. She survived, but the disease left her face permanently scarred. 
From that moment on, the Venetian ceruse became less of a choice and more of a necessity. But here's the catch. Lead is a neurotoxin. Every single day, that lead-based paint was seeping into her skin and entering her bloodstream. The new DNA analysis confirms the devastating impact. The toxicological report shows lead levels that would be considered a medical emergency today. And the side effects? They are a checklist of horrors. Lead poisoning causes skin lesions, hair loss, and severe dental decay. Courtiers noted her teeth were blackened stumps and her hair had thinned so much she was completely reliant on wigs. But the lead didn't just attack her body, it attacked her mind. It causes memory loss, fatigue, irritability, and severe depression. And that's putting it lightly. The crazy part is the lead was only half the story. To remove the thick, corrosive paste, her ladies-in-waiting would have used another toxic brew, one containing mercury. Mercury is also a potent neurotoxin, so she was in a daily toxic cycle, poisoning herself with lead to create the mask and then poisoning herself with mercury to take it off. The new analysis shows traces of both metals locked in her system. This combination is what makes the findings so weird. It was a one-two punch that attacked her organs and her brain. Her iconic image was a gilded cage and the price of that perfection was a slow, agonizing breakdown. She was a living legend, but her body was keeping score. The Final Decline As Elizabeth approached her 70th year, the magnificent illusion she had so carefully maintained for a lifetime began to crumble. To her people, she was still the unbreakable queen who had faced down the mighty Spanish Armada. In 1588, Elizabeth's navy defeated the invading Spanish Armada, the most powerful force in Europe at the time. But what most people don't realize is that behind the palace walls, the queen was disappearing. She was physically frail, mentally exhausted and haunted by a profound sense of loss that no amount of power could fix. The world she knew had vanished. Most of her trusted friends and advisors were gone. William Cecil, her steadfast chief minister for 40 years, had passed away. Her spy master, Francis Walsingham, was long gone. The loss of her ladies-in-waiting, women who had been her companions since girlhood, left her devastatingly alone. This wasn't just sadness, it was a profound, crippling grief. And the new DNA analysis gives this grief a chilling new context. The high levels of lead and mercury in her system would have amplified these feelings, turning normal sadness into a deep chemical depression. But the ghost that loomed largest was that of Robert Devereux, the Earl of Essex. He had been her brilliant, reckless favorite, but his ambition got the better of him. In 1601, he led a foolish, failed rebellion against her. Elizabeth, the queen, had no choice but to sign his death warrant. The execution of Essex was an act of state, but for Elizabeth, the woman, it was a wound that would never heal. Her cousin, Sir Robert Carey, wrote that in her final year, the queen would sit in darkened rooms, weeping over Essex's fate. She was drowning in a sea of regret. This emotional collapse triggered a shocking physical decline. Yeah, about that. Her legendary sweet tooth, a diet rich in sugar, had finally caught up with her. Her teeth had decayed into those blackened stumps, but it was worse than just cosmetic. The new analysis, combined with historical accounts, points to multiple painful abscesses rotting her jaw from within. These infections in her mouth were constantly pumping bacteria into her bloodstream. This is a condition modern medicine calls sepsis. And the new DNA report? It showed massive markers for systemic infection. So here's the deal. She was suffering from lead poisoning, mercury poisoning, profound depression, and a raging, untreated blood infection. This is the weird cocktail that science has finally uncovered. It explains everything that happened next. The queen was fading and her body was sending terrifying signals. The Silent Terror In the cold, damp days of March 1603, Richmond Palace became a place of hushed whispers. Queen Elizabeth, the immovable center of the English world for 45 years, was in her final decline, and her behavior became truly bizarre. This is where the new DNA evidence, the lead, the mercury, the sepsis, connects all the dots. She refused to go to bed, not just for a night, for weeks. 
Instead, she spent hours, sometimes more than 15 hours a day, standing or sitting motionless on cushions piled on the floor. Her attendants believe she was terrified that if she lay down, she would never get up again. But the scientific analysis suggests something more. This was classic psychosis, a break from reality. The lead and mercury were attacking her brain, causing paranoia and hallucinations. The sepsis was giving her a raging fever and the pain from her abscesses was likely agonizing. She wasn't just afraid of passing, she was trapped in a living nightmare, unable to trust her own mind or body. Her ladies-in-waiting, desperate to help, were swatted away. She refused her doctors. She stopped allowing her attendants to bathe or dress her. And then there's the story of her coronation ring. She had worn it for 45 years as a symbol of her marriage to her kingdom. As her health failed, her body swelled. The DNA analysis suggests this was massive organ failure, likely her kidneys, a direct result of the lead poisoning. Her body was retaining fluid. The ring began to cut deep into the flesh of her finger. It became so embedded that her doctors had to file it off her hand, a deeply traumatic act that she saw as a terrible omen. On March 24, 1603, the end finally came. Elizabeth I died on March 24, 1603, after ruling for 44 years. She passed away, not with a final command, but in a profound silence. And this is where the weirdest rumor of all comes from. A lady-in-waiting named Elizabeth Southwell claimed that weeks after the queen was entombed, her body, bloated with foul humors, burst open inside its lead coffin. The explosion was supposedly so violent, it released a toxic vapor. For centuries, this was dismissed as propaganda, but the new analysis makes this grimly plausible. The combination of sepsis and organ failure would have led to a rapid gas-filled decomposition. It's a rare but real phenomenon. Her body was a time bomb set by her own hand. The Real Elizabeth So what is the final verdict? For centuries, rumors have swirled. Was it a broken heart? A secret assassination? What did scientists really find inside Queen Elizabeth's body? The truth is, it wasn't one simple thing. That's precisely what makes it so weird, so chilling. It was the perfect tragic storm, a cascade of system failures that brought down one of history's most powerful monarchs. And now, groundbreaking DNA and toxin analysis proves it once and for all. All the elaborate conspiracy theories about her being secretly poisoned by Spanish rivals or ambitious courtiers? The DNA evidence sweeps them off the table. That's not what happened. The analysis of her tissues, preserved for over 400 years, points to a different, more intimate culprit. The person who poisoned Queen Elizabeth was Elizabeth herself. It was a slow, methodical, and entirely unintentional poisoning that lasted for decades. It started not just with vanity, but with something she craved even more. Control. It began with her need to project an ironclad image of power and eternal youth. That image, the famous Mask of Youth, was built on Venetian ceruse. This thick, white, fashionable paste was what she slathered on her face every single day. And it was this cosmetic that sealed her fate. Because Venetian ceruse was quite simply lead. With every application, the lead seeped into her pores, leaching into her bloodstream. It was a relentless assault. The lead destroyed her body from the inside out, causing her kidneys and liver to fail. It made her hair thin and brittle. It pocked her skin with lesions, which, in a tragic irony, forced her to apply even more of the white lead to cover the damage. But the lead didn't just attack her body, it attacked her mind. It fueled the deep, dark depression and the unpredictable paranoia that consumed her, especially in her final years after the Essex Rebellion. Then, as if that weren't enough, there was the mercury. What did she use to remove the thick, caked-on lead paste at the end of the day? A mercury-based cleanser. She was, quite literally, washing poison off with more poison. This toxic cocktail of heavy metals created a compounding neurological crisis. And finally, there was the third horseman of her personal apocalypse, sepsis. Elizabeth was famous for her love of sugar, a rare delicacy. Her teeth were famously black and rotting. This wasn't just a cosmetic problem. Her mouth was a breeding ground for bacteria. 
The DNA analysis shows that this bacteria entered her bloodstream, creating a raging systemic infection. It was an explosion her body, already weakened and ravaged by decades of lead and mercury, simply could not fight. Her immune system was gone. The truly weird finding, the one that ties it all together, is this. She wasn't just a queen, she was a human chemical experiment gone horribly wrong. Her final bizarre behavior, which so baffled her court, suddenly makes perfect horrifying sense. The legendary refusal to lie down, the standing for 15 hours straight until she collapsed, the long stretches of deep silence, the paranoid rages. This wasn't madness in a romantic royal sense. It was the predictable physiological result of heavy metal toxins and a massive septic infection ravaging her brain. So the Virgin Queen was a victim of her own image. But here's the real question. Was it a price she was willing to pay? Let us know what you think in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe for more hidden history.